if you knew you were enough? What would your life look like? What would love look like? This is the Enough Factor Broadcast, where we're redefining what makes you enough in life and in love. Now here's your host, Suzette Birna. Hello everybody, it's your life coach and relationship solutionist, Suzette Birnon, and welcome to my Enough Factor podcast. Each week, it is my pleasure and privilege to share with you content that amplifies three factors that are critical to your feelings of enoughness. They are your voice, your value, and your vision. People who are clear and confident in using their voice, they know their value, they are clear about their vision, tend to have the most satisfying experiences of love and life. And that's why each week I want to share with you the insights that I've gained from going from a person who was a magnet for unavailable men to finding real love and having gotten clarity around it. I want to help as many women as I can to have a different experience of love and have a more dignified experience of themselves in relationships. So let's get to it. Today, y'all, I want to really talk about what you want. What usually brings people to relationship anything, whether it's a relationship conference, seminar, relationship book, is you're seeking answers. Something in your relationship is not going the way you want it to. Or if you're not in one, something in your previous relationship was not what you wanted. You had an experience in that relationship that was not what you wanted. And you try to find answers so that you don't have that happen again. Or you've gotten a divorce, maybe a couple, if you're like me. And though you got out of it and lived to tell about it, you still aren't sure that you're enough. You left with some self-doubt. You left not sure you can be trusted to not pick a man that will cause you to go through the same thing again. You're not confident. And so you're looking for answers to help you, to equip you. You know, I had to have a come to Jesus meeting, several of them, about my relationships. Especially after reading books. I mean, I had enough books to have a pure library of relationship books. I loved watching talk shows where they would have men on the panel 
to break down how men think and what they do and how to interpret a man's actions. Because isn't that what leaves us with the most confusion? We can't figure out why he did what he did or why he does what he does. He says he wants a relationship, but won't do the things to keep him in one. He says he wants you. He wants things to work, but yet he won't change the things that are causing a breakdown in the relationship. And so you just can't figure it out. You don't know why you can attract a man, but you can't keep him. You don't know why after all these years of living and loving and dating and all the relationships you've had, why aren't you married yet? Why are you in your 40s, in your 50s, in your 60s, and you've never been married? These are the kind of questions that leave you kind of like, I don't know what's going on here. If you don't know what's going on, you can't properly address it, right? And so you go to a relationship coach, you go to a therapist, and that person asks you, why are you here? What do you want? I'll ask them, what do you want? And they'll take me through the blow by blow of what their experience was. But the problem with that is they didn't answer the question. They think they answered it. But they didn't answer the question because the question was, what do you want? And I've had a lot of time to really lean into the reason why I used to do that. The reason why when people ask me what I wanted, it was easier for me to tell them what I didn't want than what I did want. And what I discovered was the only residence I had ever lived in was what I didn't want. I had never lived in a space of what I did want. I could only tell you, I don't want a man who cheats. I don't want a man who's inconsistent. I could tell you all the attributes of a man I didn't want. But because I had never experienced anything except that, when asked what I did want in a relationship, what I did want in a man, I could not tell you. Because, see, I knew I could get what I didn't want. I could point to all the experiences on my relationship resume and give you my relationship experiences. 
and I can go in chronological order to the things in each relationship that I did not want. And I can tell you, I don't want that anymore. But that's not telling me what you do want. It's like making a grocery list of the things you don't want. And then going to the grocery store. How do you know that you've gotten what you do want? If the only thing you know is what you don't want. And many times after the women get through telling me about their relationship situation and saga. And I say, but what do you want? They'll say, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to, to move on from this relationship. I don't know whether I'm asking too much. I don't know if maybe I need to change. I don't know if maybe I need to go on and settle for this because this is all I can get. Do I leave what, I, what I'm familiar with? Not knowing if it's feasible, if it's realistic. Am I, am I being ridiculous? After all, he's a good at this. He's good at that. He does this. He does that. And then I ask him, but what do you want? I don't know. That, my sister, is the problem. You don't know what you want. And if you don't know what you want, how do you know that you've got it? If the only data you can present is what you don't want, how do you know what you do want? One would think that you want the opposite of it. Yeah, but how do you know? If you're getting the opposite of it, how do you know? In order for you to have what it is that your soul desires, you have to be able to articulate it. You have to be able to write that thing down with absolute clarity. I find it very interesting that people can tell you exactly what kind of car they want, but they can't tell you what kind of relationship partner they want. They'll even make a list to go in the grocery store because they know what they want. And people that go into the grocery store and know what they want, leave with it. But people that go into a grocery store not knowing what they want usually walk out with nothing. Another thing that keeps us from being clear is we've grown up in this age of marketing. People try to find out what other folks want and convince them that you have what they want. Marketing. And that's why people go from relationship book to relationship book and relationship coach to relationship coach and relationship guru to relationship guru because you figure if you can find out what he wants, then you can become that. That's clever. Clever is five ways you can get a man to. That's clever. Or the one thing you can do to make a man 
That's clever. Because you see, clever says, how can I present myself in a way that'll get him to give me what I want? And so many people are trying to present you with clever and convincing you that that's the answer. Then you try it and it doesn't work. Or worse, you try it and it does work, but then you don't know what to do after that. I don't sell clever. I don't promote clever. I promote clarity. Clarity is knowing what you want, recognizing when you have it, and understanding that you deserve it. You know how to sustain it. You know how to maintain it because you're clear, not because you're clever. Because clarity says, how can I become my best relationship self so that I can have a more fulfilling experience of relationships? That's clarity. Clarity says, how can I be more responsible in how I handle my heart? Clarity seeks to know what it doesn't know. Not to manipulate, but to elevate. Because manipulation will only take you so far. It's not sustainable. Clever is not sustainable. But clarity is. So I want to introduce you to the land of clarity to the land of, when I ask you, what do you want? You can tell me exactly what you want. And it doesn't come from pain. It comes from authentic truth. So, let's kind of take this thing in layers, okay? Clearly, you don't want to be treated the way you have been. Clearly, you don't want the same experience. Put your finger there. Then my next question is, would being treated differently be enough for you? Would having a different experience be sufficient? Now, before you bellow out a really enthusiastic, yes! then I need you to define different. What would different look like? Define treated differently. Define a different experience. I don't need you to whip out dictionary.com. No, I want a good answer. What would that look like for you? If I were to ask a room full of women, what do you want most in a man? The answers that would invariably come up would be consistency. He's attentive. He has a plan. In other words, he's got his mm, together. This is a family show, so I can't say the word. (laughs) But, you know, fill in the blank. He's got his mm, together. Right? And he knows what he wants and he's not afraid to go after it. How many of you would say, oh, yep, yep, that's that's what I want. That's what I want. Well, let me ask you this. What if a man had all that, but you had not defined what it means? When you say you want to be treated differently. That you haven't gotten clarity around the different experience. What that different experience would look like for you. 
then you could fall for somebody. Checks off consistency, attentive, has a plan, knows what he wants, and isn't afraid to go after it. But you still haven't resolved whether just because he has these qualities, is he going to treat you differently? Yeah, he has all these qualities, but is he going to give me a different experience? What is the different experience? What is the treated differently? I ask because there are a lot of men out there who are ready, willing, and able to do that. So why aren't they in your life? Clearly, there's a disconnect between what you say you want and what you justify not having. You need to pick a side. Because remember, clarity is when I ask you what you want, you can tell me. And when you live in the land of clarity, you don't keep retreating to accepting what you don't want. You don't keep retreating to the land that's familiar, what I don't want. You have to pick a side. A person can paint the walls and cover cracks. But if you don't hire somebody to do a thorough inspection, you can buy a house that has foundation damage and you don't even know. Because you did not have a person to inspect it before you bought it. You like the carpeting. You like the paint on the walls. You like the layout. But when you're talking about true partnership and real love and committed love, you got to look at more than that. That's an investment. That's an investment of the heart. Hiring an inspector reveals foundation damage, reveals plumbing issues, piss issues. They shine their flashlight in different places and they can find mouse droppings. Oh, you are so happy about how the house looks. You don't even know. Water retention issues, mold, termites, drainage problems, noisy neighbors. Many of you fall in love with the aesthetics. He texts me every day. He seems to be responsible. We look at all the aesthetics and don't have the inner discipline and fortitude to drill down a little deeper, to wait a little longer before we're ready to slap a label on it. Wait a little bit longer. Instead of vetting him to see if he wants to get married or not, Don't you want to bet him to see if he's somebody you'd want to be married to? Right? Because it's expensive. It's emotionally expensive when there are foundation issues in a relationship. It is emotionally expensive. And even the things I named, if you don't get those handled, Before you sign the dotted line, it's going to be so expensive. And it doesn't matter how beautifully decorated the house is. It doesn't matter. Oftentimes, people, when they come to me or when they seek out answers, they're looking for pain relief. That's the main thing most people look for. Pain relief. And they think that if they can get that man to change, it will resolve everything. 
People are seeking pain relief and calling it dating. People are seeking pain relief and calling it relationships. When all this happening is people are looking for, they're looking for somebody to make them feel better. They're looking for something to make them feel good. They're looking for the feel good. And when the feel good stops, then they're looking for pain relief. They think that if they can figure out what's wrong with them or what's wrong with him, it'll end their suffering. So in them looking for answers, they're looking for answers to end suffering. And they think if they can get him to do what they want, it'll end their suffering. But looking for pain relief is not having a vision. When someone asks you what you want, what they're asking you is, what is your vision? What does a good relationship look like for you? What would be good? And this is the thing. This is the reason why, as your coach, it is so important for me to provide you with information and tools to help you to have what you envision. And by doing so, increase your likelihood exponentially of attracting great love into your life. That's my intention as your coach. I'm not trying to give you something clever or give you pain relief. Mm -mm. I'm trying to align you with your authentic truth because I know there is a formula to this that happy women in relationships know. And if clever is all you're looking for, or pain management is all you're looking for, I know I'm not your coach. But if you know what you want and are committed to removing everything out of your way that keeps you from getting it, I'm your coach and I can help. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. And I want you, regardless of what you're going through in your relationships, to know that you are worthy. You're worth it. You are more than enough. Bye now. You have just listened to the Enough Factor Podcast with your host, Suzette Fiernon. To get notified of new episodes or to dig deeper into today's topic, become a subscriber. And while you're at it, tell us how we're doing and what topics you're interested in. We appreciate your feedback and your reviews. Until next time, remember, you are worthy, you are worth it, you are enough.